Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to do a Crypto 101 video on how to use your Ledger Nano S with the My Ethereum Wallet website and also how to add custom tokens. I'd gotten a lot of comments in my videos asking me to cover something like this because there's a lot of uh, newcomers to the space who are maybe a little bit worried about sending ERC20 tokens to an Ethereum address, not having them show up, and then kind of freaking out. To be honest, it was definitely something that scared me in the beginning, so I wanted to do a video just to clear up some concerns. Pleasant reminder, please hit that like button and that subscribe button. Leave your comments below. I appreciate all the support I get from you guys and you're the reason that I continue to make videos every week. If you're interested in chatting with me, you can pop into my Discord. I'll leave the link down below. Also, if you like podcasts and you like cryptocurrency information, you guys should take a listen to the Crypto Basic podcast. Uh, three friends that I've met recently, not so recently now, I guess, that I love their content. I've been listening to them for quite a while. They make really awesome non-biased information that's very informative. It's very similar to the content I make, but in podcast form. So you should go check them out. Final point to mention is my normal disclaimer, which is that I am not a financial advisor. All investments have inherent risk. Please always do your own research. And my videos are for entertainment purposes only. All right, so let's get started. The first thing you want to do, obviously, is make sure that your ledger is on the newest firmware. You can do that by downloading Ledger Live. Ledger Live is currently their newest replacement for their Google Chrome plugin. If you have a ledger and you were using it in the past, you remember using the Google Chrome plugins as the way to access everything. They now came up with this application, which is a desktop application that helps you manage all of your cryptocurrencies, add accounts, add and delete apps from the ledger itself. When you open this application, it's going to prompt you to update the ledger or update the application itself if either are out of date. Those are the best ways to tell if the ledger is out of date and just get that over with first to make sure that if you're having any other issues that it's not just because you're on the wrong firmware. I haven't used this application very much, but I do like the idea that I know that there's eventually gonna be a mobile app that syncs with this and it's pretty much the same thing, but on a phone. So that's very important because honestly, one of the bigger complaints about Ledger is that the fact that you need a third party plugin to access it and it was very hard to access your cryptocurrency once it was on the Ledger because there was really no other applications or other sources that you could use to get into the Ledger. Step two is head over to my Ethereum wallet because obviously that would be where we have to go to use it, right? So up here, um, it says, don't get fished, please and thank you. Bookmark my Ether wallet um, or install MetaMask and so on. There was a kind of like a hack issue a while back that people had changed the URL of my Ethereum or, or had a URL that was very close to my Ethereum wallet, but wasn't the same. And they were able to get people to pretty much send their private keys to them and they were stealing stuff. So the first step is I would suggest that you bookmark this page or do something so that you make sure that you're always going to the authentic real myetheriumwallet.com so that you prevent any issues going forward, any fear, concern of security breaches. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to operate the actual site with your ledger. Um, in the past, you needed to go into the ledger and turn on browser support and contract data on the app so that the website would recognize it. But now, because they've done the most recent update, the only thing you need to do is turn on contract data. Browser support is just built into it. So let's log in. We're gonna go to, let's say, send ether and tokens, right? So how do you wanna access your wallet? We're gonna hit ledger. Uh, connect to ledger. It would be helpful if I had entered my pin. So I got to do that quickly. You want to make sure that your ledger pin is entered because then the ledger is active. Otherwise it's locked. So once you've entered the pin, you're going to want to open the Ethereum app, obviously, because the website is trying to access that app. So open Ethereum. Okay. Connect to ledger wallet. Cool. So now what you're seeing here is a, a whole bunch of different addresses that are kind of intimidating, but really the only thing that you matters for you is this one because it says ledger ETH. So it's just accessing the ledger from this website. There is a ton of different addresses that are gonna be associated with your ledger. You can even hit more addresses and see. You can keep everything in one address. You can separate it. For me, I have a way I organize it and I keep things separately. So we are gonna to go to the address that I keep my tokens on. Unlock your wallet and we're here. So now um, what people will say is, okay, well, I, I click down ETH and I only see a few options. I don't see all the options. What will happen is if you participate in an ICO or you buy a coin that's maybe lesser known, it's gonna give you a contract address. And the contract address is basically the Genesis account or the account that's created the tokens to begin with. So in order for your ledger or for my Ethereum wallet to pick up on the fact that you have those tokens, you need to go to add custom token. My contract address, the token contract address is where you'd enter what they have offered 
to give you or whatever they, they're listing as their contract address. That allows uh, my Ethereum wallet to recognize that address and then recognize what tokens you're trying to add because it's already on their site. The token symbol would be, you know, for Ethereum, it's ETH. You want to make sure that you know what that is so that you you put the right one in there. And then decimals, as far as I know, is always 18. So you'd add that. You'd press save, right? So obviously it's going to say error right now for me. But as you can see, I have um, an ethos balance and a seal balance. And basically what I had to do for both of those was manually enter the contract address, the token symbol, and the decimals. And then it will populate here at the bottom. Um, you can also go to show all tokens. It will give you a huge list. Uh, if any of these are, are ones that you've added to your wallet, you can click to load and it will show you that you have them on the address. Otherwise, it doesn't really know. I mean, there's so many of these, it can't constantly be loading those addresses or it would take forever. Um, so, and then the next thing is, is well, people will say, well, I go to send a ERC20 token my Ethereum wallet, but I don't see it listed as a dropdown and as an item in the dropdown menu. So once you add something in custom token, I don't know if you need to refresh the page or if it just automatically does it, but when you go to the dropdown menu, the option will be there. Now, the other thing is um, the gas price here is something that's important because the gas price is basically the speed at which the transaction is going to be confirmed. Now, I suggest going to uh, ethgasstation.info, which is a great website that will show you based on the congestion of the network, it'll estimate what gas you should be sending a transaction with. Now, something that I don't have a ton of experience with is the gas limit. I've noticed that for certain coins, when you enter them, this number will change. If I'm being frank, I can't tell you why it changes. I just know that it does. So if you're trying to figure out what the transaction cost should be or what your gas should be, you want to take that number if it changes and you want to enter it in here and then it'll auto populate how much you should be using for transaction fee. So right now the gas price is 2.7, which is very low. I've had experiences where the gas price has been in the 60s for me to send something in a reasonable amount of time. It's nice to check this ahead of time because you may end up sending a transaction and wasting ETH for gas if you don't check it because you may add more, it may be more expensive than you, you know, anticipated or less expensive than you anticipated and in which case you'd be wasting ETH. The other thing that I want to mention that it took me a little while to understand is if you're sending tokens, not Ethereum, say I want to send the, my Ethos tokens to somebody. If you're sending Ethos to somebody else, you need to have some amount of Ethereum on this wallet. So for me, I keep my ETH and my um, tokens on separate wallets. I don't know why, I've just always done it that way. So I have to have a small amount of ETH on the token wallet address so that I can send tokens to somebody else because it uses gas and gas is Ethereum. So if there's no ETH on the wallet, you will not be able to send the tokens. The, the transaction will fail. That's something to be aware of. The other thing is if you send a transaction and it gives you the confirmation at the bottom of the page and it shows you the transaction number, but maybe you close out that alert or maybe you didn't realize what it was and you're nervous and you wanna check the status of the transaction, you can always go to the um, ETH here, Etherscan, that will show you where your transaction is as far as getting confirmed. And then tokens right here will show you the token balance for this wallet. So let's say, you know, worst case scenario, you try to add something and you can't see it and you're freaking out. You can go to, um, ethplore and you can see your token balances they'll all load there so let's say you're trying to add kin right and kin's not showing up in the wallet if you right click the um the name of the token on ethplore it'll bring up the original um you know the original information all the information about kin and right here where it says contract this would be the number that you want to add into my ethereum wallet so you take this you'd add it into the contract address Kin would be the name, and then see where it says decimals here? This would be the 18 that I was talking about. So if you can't find the contract address for a token that you bought, and you're trying to add it to Mu and it's not working, you can always go to ethplorer, click on the name of the token, and then get all the information about the token directly from the ethplorer website, which is also very useful. That took me a little bit of time to figure out as well, but now that I know that, it's very helpful. I know that sometimes sending transactions, dealing with these tokens can be a little intimidating, 
But always remember that it is a public ledger. It's on the blockchain. And if the transaction was confirmed and went through, you have those tokens. They belong to you. You just have to figure out how to access them. I know sometimes it can be very scary. You think something disappeared or is missing forever. But take a deep breath and just try to think logically about how to access things. Because a lot of times I'll see posts on Reddit of people freaking out, not being able to find stuff. And it's simply just learning the lay of the land and getting used to using these applications. All right, guys, so that about wraps it up for me today and my walkthrough. P.S., if you hear any weird noises in the background, I have a bird, and he's in a very peculiar mood, and he's going all over the place making noises and being annoying. So heads up about that. Um, if you have any more questions about this, you can, again, join my Discord. You can leave comments down below. If you like this walkthrough and you would like other walkthroughs for me, um, for me to do other walkthroughs, Leave a suggestion. I always read the comments. I re reply to most of them. And your input's really appreciated because sometimes I get burned out on what kinds of ideas to do, especially because after a while I feel like everybody has made these walkthrough videos or it's not as important anymore because, you know, people have better experience in the space. But I, you know, there's always new people and there's always new ideas and concepts that people want me to cover. So if you make a suggestion, I will certainly do my best to cover it. And as usual, I want to thank you guys for watching and I will see you all soon.